Here we go again. Here we go again. This is Susan Gannett and Annette Mitchell, and today we're going to show you how to go small. Here's Annette. Take it away. All right. Well, good morning. Um, when you're in art classes, academic art classes, a lot of the time you're told over and over and over, go bigger, 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 because generally speaking, the larger a person works, the faster they learn. When you're at a point where you can have fun and do whatever you darn well please, it's fun to see go smaller, 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 see how small you can go. And that's something a lot of us enjoy. When you're trying to do something really tiny, uh, then one medium that really allows that to happen is what's called a dip pen. These are dip pens. Uh, the reason they're called that is you dip them in ink and draw with them. Of the dip pens that are available, the one that has the tiniest point and will result in the smallest line is called a crow quill because apparently originally it was made from the feather of a crow and carved down to a small point. But today it's just a, a metal steel point. And when you dip it into something like a bottle of India ink, uh, you dip it in and you come out, I'll show you, you have to be really careful to wipe the back of the pen off. But when you draw with it, it will make the tiniest possible line. So that might assist us when we're trying to work small. To show you how something like this can be done, uh, I have this photograph of a waterfall in a Alexandria, New Hampshire, that my son took. So if I'm looking at, at, at looking at that as my subject, rather than being out there on location, I could look at that or any subject that you chose. It doesn't have to be anything like this. But when you start, you probably want to get a piece of uh, good quality white paper that the pen will draw on and it would, this is Arches Cover white paper, but you can draw on anything you have. When you take that paper, and a regular old pencil, just doesn't have to be anything special, and a kneaded eraser. You can look at your subject, and whatever your subject you choose to be, you can take your pencil and sketch it out on the paper uh, with the pencil, because the pencil will guide you in making the drawing that you want. Um, and later, that pencil that's underlying your drawing can be erased. So you can just feel free to do whatever you want to in the way of a pencil drawing fairly lightly on a good piece of white paper. And then once you get it drawn, you might notice that I'm starting in the middle and working my way out to the edges rather than going on and drawing uh, an edge around it. Once I see that I have the seam that I want, then I might actually take a pencil and sketch an outline around the edge. And I might think, is this small, small enough? Well, let's see. It's a little larger today than it was a day or two ago, but it's fairly small. At this stage in the process, you would take whatever you have, a tiny little pen or a nib, dip it in the ink, and every single time you come out of the ink bottle, every time, you wipe the back of the nib off so that when you actually draw, with the pen, it will make a teeny tiny little line, little ink line that later 
after it's had plenty of time to dry, you can take your soft eraser and erase any pencil lines that are still hanging out around the edges of the drawing. Now you can do any kind of drawing you want to. You could do it all with dots. You could just fill it in, or you could do what is called crosshatch drawing, where you make a series of parallel lines that result in a value, in a darkness. Now, if you decide to do a quill pen crosshatch drawing, it's called crosshatching because the lines all go in one direction and you put them fairly close together to get the dark. And then when you have gotten a whole series of lines that are running parallel, let's see, I'll hold it up. You can see it's making the darkness uh, in it. Then the next uh, series of lines are gonna cross these lines. So that's why it's called cross hatching. You could put your pen down and draw across the lines that you did the first time. And that's why it's called cross hatch. Now you, you can put the lines anywhere you want them and however many, you could just keep going until it gets solid black uh, if you want to do this. But you can control how dark or light it is by how many lines you cross over. Each time, if you keep going, each time you take a different direction than the previous direction that you took. And then they all build up and make a nice dark. So this little drawing uh, was done with what's called cross hatching. And it's just slowly but surely worked your way out. If you wanted to, you could ink the line around the edge or you can just let it be. When it's super dry, you take your kneaded eraser and you go over it and all the pencil comes out from underneath and you have your finished work.